Looks like everybody involved in real estate's getting in big trouble lately, especially Open Door. In fact, Open Door now is being sued by people that Open Door purchased their homes for $62 million. Hmm, why is that happening? Let's see, because they ripped people off, guys. You know, there's been so much hate and so much uh, anger towards real estate agents over this whole NAR settlement recently. And, um, you know, I've heard people say in the comments, well, I'll just sell my house to Open Door or BlackRock or whatever, you know, and avoid paying commissions, blah, 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 blah. Like, well, guess what? Those guys are ripping you off too. The FTC is issuing $62 million in refunds right now to about 55,000 home sellers that worked with Open Door. Why is this happening? Because authorities say that these customers late made less money selling their homes using Open Door's platform despite being promised the opposite. Shocker, huh? So many people get so upset about paying commissions and all of that and having a real estate agent working for them, but it's okay to get ripped off by a corporation and have the house, you know, owned by corporate America and moving towards the goal of you'll own nothing and be happy. That sounds like a good cause to contribute to people. Now, personally, I don't care if you use a real estate agent or not, but I'm just trying to make a point that, you know, so many people are just blind when it comes to this stuff. They're like, oh, I'll save the commission. Well, you know, Open Door's paying you 30 grand less for the house than you could probably get. So there's that. They say here that most people who sold to Open Door made thousands of dollars less than they would have made selling their homes using the traditional process and many paid more in costs than what sellers typically paid. That's according to the FTC. And of course, Open Door says that they're innocent and you know they strongly disagree with this decision, just like the NAR, of course. And nobody is gonna plead guilty to this stuff. Nobody's gonna say, yeah, you know, we knowingly gave people a lot less money to steal properties out from under people. Now, in Open Door's advertisements to people, they said that because of their bundling costs, that the fees to sell the home would be lower, which ended up not actually being the case. According to the FTC, Open Door's marketing materials appeared to promise consumers they would make more selling to the company because fees were bundled together. But consumers often paid more and the iBuyer on average paid sellers below market value. That's a shocker too, isn't it? I understand why some people sell to places like Open Door or, you know, we buy houses for cash companies and stuff like that because they want a quick sale, right? They just want to get out of the property for whatever reason. They need the money fast. They don't have time to wait for the traditional approach. That seems to be the number one reason why people would go for this. But you have to understand that in exchange, you're giving up a significant portion of your equity that you might otherwise be able to realize going the traditional route. Things just haven't been going well for Open Door in general. In fact, in 2022, they lost over a billion dollars in just one quarter because their iBuyer program was upside down. They were paying, you know, crazy prices for these properties, even though they were still blowballing people and trying to flip them for a profit and it wasn't working. That led to them cutting 22% of their staff in 2023. So now this, now they're being sued. They're gonna have to fork over another 62 million. And apparently in 2023, the company felt so confident in their ability to kind of bounce back in this housing market that they bought back 50% of their outstanding bonds, reducing its debt balance by nearly $190 million as of the third quarter of 2023. So if I don't even know what they're talking about, I don't know how Open Door is supposedly doing well right now with how much money they've been hemorrhaging over the past couple of years and the layoffs and all of this. But despite that, they're trying to keep going and um, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year or two we hear that open doors going out of business. You know, the moral of the story is, guys, you should never work with these corporate home buyers, okay? First of all, if you want to sell your house, you know, do the right thing and contribute to society. Make sure that house goes to somebody who needs that house. You know, sell it to a young family trying to get started. Sell it to somebody who's actually gonna live in the house, not an investor. Prioritize those people. You can do that as a home seller. There's nothing wrong with choosing who you want to sell the house to. You know, you have that right. But just letting it go to corporate America and then losing money on top of that is just foolish, you know? And now all these people are getting a payout 
you know, but they were the ones who were stupid. They were the ones who fell for this and they're getting paid for their stupidity of selling to open door to begin with. And it's not just open door guys, it's all the iBuyer companies like Zillow used to do this. They're out of the game now. But you also have other big corporate buyers like BlackRock and those guys that come in and try to buy the house for people or even just signs you see posted on the street in areas you know that say we buy houses for cash and those type of things avoid them like the plague because if you decide to sell to some of those guys it's a guarantee that you're gonna get ripped off they're gonna lowball you on the purchase price because they figure everybody who calls those numbers are desperate for the cash fast and in exchange they try to get you out of the house you know and pay you significantly less now one thing i wanted to bring up here briefly on the channel that i haven't really talked about much is tokenized real estate and if you don't know what that is it's like say for example this house behind me was tokenized then this the ownership of this house could be on the blockchain and essentially, you know, the ownership of this house could be divided up by hundreds or even thousands of different people, kind of like what a REIT is now with the stock market, but it uses the blockchain technology to manage the ownership of the house and percentages and all of that. I've had a couple of companies reach out to me that actually do this. One of them I think is called Fractional and they want to sponsor the channel. But honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about this. You know, I feel like it is one of those things that is just going to continue to make real estate more expensive because, you know, it's more corporations buying up houses under the disguise of being owned by thousands of different people, you know, real estate collectives. And I feel like we already have enough of that. So let me know if that's something you would like to see here on the channel. I know some people out there are investors and probably would be interested in this but um, i would think the vast majority would not so just let me know now everybody who's been counting on the fact that mortgage rates are supposed to come down for this home buying season uh-uh it's not gonna happen why not because freddie mac just came out and recently said that their latest economic forecasts for mortgage rates to remain at six and a half percent for the first half of this year. Well, yeah, it's, it's already been at 7% for a long time, so it hasn't really been moving, and we're getting very close to half of the year being over already. They also think that inflation is gonna remain well above 2% for now because the economy is booming. I'm just gonna go with it, guys. I'm not even gonna argue this right now. You already know how I feel about this stuff. And Freddie Mac, they go on to say that they don't believe that the Fed will cut rates at least until the middle of this summer, but, Surprises on inflation could push rate cuts out even further. As a result, treasury yields will remain elevated in the near term, keeping mortgage rates elevated. So it looks like as the year goes on, as we keep going through the months here, that you know these predictions that the Fed's not gonna cut rates at all this year, we're not gonna see interest rates go down, they look like more and more like those guys are gonna be right. And Freddie Mac's been wrong too because you know last month, they predicted that rates would remain at 6.5% in the first quarter and trend down to 6% by the year's end. But right now, you have mortgage rates hovering basically at 7%. It's only less than that for the most well-qualified borrowers, people that have 850 credit scores and no debt and high incomes. Here we have a house for sale for 2.25 million and this is the opposite of what you want when you're trying to sell a house. They've been trying to sell this house forever since the middle of 2023 and they actually increased the price they also put it for rent for 13 oh i'm sorry fifteen thousand dollars a month and then finally rented it for nine thousand dollars a month so just way overshooting the price of everything with the rent and the sale price and it's just sitting here sitting on the market meanwhile they're getting twenty five thousand dollars a year in the tax bill and I think they're cheating on their taxes because they have a homestead exemption, but they just rented the property. Hmm, not sure about that. Now, I actually did a story earlier this year talking about uh, Fannie Mae's mortgage rate predictions, and I have it marked on my calendar to check in October this year to see if they were correct, because before they said mortgage rates would be at 5.8% by the end of this year. And that's for the 30 year fixed mortgage, guys. So 
I don't think we're gonna see that happen. And even if we do, that's not really gonna do anything for affordability for practically anyone. So even if that were to happen, it's not like that's gonna bring a whole lot of excitement into the housing market, I don't think. But it looks like it's just not gonna happen. I mean, we're still sitting at 7%, in almost the middle of April now, guys. And we keep seeing inflation higher than the Fed's target. We keep seeing these bogus uh, unemployment and jobs numbers come out way hotter than what the Fed wants to see right now. And the odds of them cutting rates are basically nil at this point. So in other words, we're basically looking at a very stale housing market once again for 2024. And this was kind of my prediction at the beginning of this year that that's most likely what we would see because there's just not much to unlock this guys like you know even if mortgage rates came way back down i do think you would see a lot of people put their homes on the market because they they think okay well now rates are down let's jump back in or whatever but the problem is the prices are still too high even if everybody could get three percent interest rates today it just wouldn't be enough you know that's not enough to entice somebody you still have to make you know over a hundred grand a year to get into a house so personally i think they're going to be way off on their year's end housing market prediction with interest rates and i have it marked in my calendar to follow up on it so you guys will be hearing from me on that later in the year in october one of the latest things that's happening with real estate that shouldn't come as a huge shocker for people is that we're starting to see foreclosures continue to rise Adam is the company that tracks this data the most diligently, it seems like, because they're the ones always coming out with these reports. And as of February, they say there's 33,000 properties in foreclosure right now, which is an 8% increase from the year prior. The CEO of Adam, he says that these trends could sign signify evolving financial landscapes for homeowners, prompting adjustments in market strategies and lending practices. And this report also discovered that foreclosure rates are up year over year in 22 states. That's almost half, guys. So there is a almost a 50% chance that where you live, foreclosures are up year over year right now. South Carolina actually is getting hit the hardest. They're the number one on the list. Delaware's number two, Florida's number three, Ohio's number four, and Connecticut's number five. Those are the top five areas we're seeing the most foreclosure increases at the moment. You know, this is one of the reasons I keep warning people also about borrowing money against their house, guys. Like if you're somebody that's trying to live off the value of your home right now because life is too unaffordable, sell it now while you can and still pocket some equity rather than try to ride this thing into the ground and live off the house for as long as possible. You're not only going to destroy your financials and your credit, but you're going to make your life so much harder after that versus just moving on now and taking whatever winnings off the table you can and trying to find something more affordable or you know, an, even a rental for now. Using the house to pay for your lifestyle is an end game that never ends well. And we're seeing this because otherwise there would be no foreclosures right now. People would be paying. Anybody with a logical brain would be selling that house with the massive amount of equity they have and getting out of it. But the reason people can't do it is they don't have equity because they've borrowed too much money against the property. Now, one thing our government decided to tackle here recently in Florida when it pertains to moving and real estate are moving companies. Apparently, too many moving companies have been scamming people out of money left and right also, just like Open Door and all the other iBuyers out there. And they're gonna be outlawing different practices. Like, first of all, they're gonna be requiring movers to sign contracts with upfront estimates from now on, which is gonna outlaw common scams like bait and switch pricing and phantom weight charges. And I had no idea this was actually such a big problem that they need to you know, go after this and make laws against this stuff now. I mean, I've moved a few times here in Florida and it was never like the greatest experience, but it wasn't horrible either. Whereas like, oh my God, you know, I would never use this company again. You know, the worst thing that happened is, you know, they broke one of my pictures, you know, they broke the glass and they refused to reimburse me for it. So 
Not the craziest thing, but it, that was the only thing that happened, you know? But I definitely wasn't scammed. But apparently, there's a lot of different moving scams out there you need to watch out for. And this applies to you anywhere if you're using a moving company, not just here in Florida. So one of the big ones is the bait and switch, where they offer you an attractively low estimate to get your business and then inflate the price dramatically once your belongings are loaded and you're in no position to argue. Sounds like a hostage situation. And they say the way to avoid this is to insist on a binding estimate after a thorough in-home inspection. A reputable company should provide a detailed contract that locks in the price based on the inventory they've assessed. And the next one is literally called the hostage load. After loading your items, the moving company demands additional fees before releasing or delivering your belongings. They say the best way to avoid this one is to verify the mover's credentials, including their U.S. Department of Transportation and MC numbers for interstate moves and check their reputation through reviews and BBB ratings. Never sign a blank or incomplete contract and ensure all fees are clearly outlined before moving day. Man, how would you like that? You get all your stuff loaded up in the truck and they're like, yep, we told you 2,000, it's gonna be 5,000. Pay up or we're not delivering your stuff. They have another scam called phantom delivery where the movers claim your items are on their way but continuously delay delivery with various excuses, sometimes demanding more money for delivery. All these guys are just extorting people. You wanna use movers with transparent tracking services or apps that allow you to see real-time updates on your shipment's location, ensure the contract specifies delivery dates or windows, and any potential penalties for delay. Once again, something most people probably aren't going to do. You know, nobody reads the contract, guys. People just sign on the dotted line. Like, all these years, I was selling real estate. I can probably count on one or maybe two hands uh, how many people actually read the entire contract for buying a place or the rental agreement, anything like that. Like, people never do this, okay? They just want the place and they just sign on the dotted line most of the time, you know? And then they ask questions later when things come up in the deal that they weren't aware of because they didn't read the contract, which is why I think that, you know, once people start trying to go it alone without buyer's agents and all this stuff in real estate, it's gonna cause a lot of problems for people because they're just gonna have no clue what the hell they're doing. They'll also do something called an inflated weight scam, which is for long distance moves, and they might overstate the weight of your shipment to charge you more. And they say in order to avoid this, get an estimate from a company that does not charge based solely on weight, or ask for a reway if the number seems off. Knowing the approximate weight of your belongings beforehand can also provide leverage. I mean, that one is going to be pretty impossible, guys. How are you going to weigh all your stuff ahead of time? Probably just want to use somebody that's not going to charge you by the weight on that one. And this last scam that they pull is really sneaky. And basically, it's called the hidden fee tactic, where they will tack additional charges onto your bill for services you thought were included, like packing materials, walking up and down the stairs, or even the distance from the truck to your front door. They say to avoid this, request a full breakdown of costs and services before agreeing to anything, ask specifically about any potential additional fees, and get everything in writing. And then, you know, one of the last things they tell people to do is to make sure you're checking the reviews of all these companies and different stuff like that. And I feel like it's kind of hard to hire any company these days based solely on reviews because so many different people have different experiences with the same company, guys. Like, you can just have a few bad employees at certain companies that give the whole company a bad name and somebody gets unlucky and deals with those employees and that causes the bad review and maybe the rest of the company is very good. Or vice versa, the company's actually horrible and everybody that works there is horrible, but you have a few good people that work there and you end up getting the good one and that gives them a few good reviews. Or sometimes they just pay people to write fake, re fake good reviews as well to make them look better than they really are. So I don't know, you have to kind of use your own best judgment with online reviews. I feel like it's something that maybe used to be more trustworthy, but with AI now and with all the fake everything out there, I really don't trust it. You know, it's kind of almost impossible to know if the reviews you're reading are even legitimate or not. The lesson of today's video, don't get scammed, guys. Stop getting scammed by 
robocallers and iBuyers and unscrupulous moving companies. Hopefully you learned a few tips here to avoid all this stuff. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.